What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So back in 2016, my hometown of Horsham made a decision to ban parkour in the town center. This was quite a big thing at the time. There was a lot of like news articles coming out, there was a lot of conversations within the community and it was quite like a weird time for parkour in Horsham. And unfortunately back then, the individuals who did parkour in Horsham didn't get the opportunity to kind of say their piece. And a couple of weeks ago, I found the BBC News footage of it, which is up there if you want to watch it. But kind of that overlaid a bit the story and the decisions about why the council decided to ban parkour in Horsham. There's, there's a whole load of things to kind of uncover and talk about in this video. Before we get started, a couple years ago, Jim the Giant did come over to Horsham and make a video there. That is linked in the description if you do want to check it out. But essentially what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna talk from the perspective of someone who was training parkour a lot in Horsham at the time and kind of the impact that it's had on the town since. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory. Back from like, I guess, early 2010 to maybe 2015, Horsham was like a hub for parkour it was it was one of those like up there with i guess brighton and london i don't know if that's quite a controversial thing to say but i feel like it was you had some of the store members living there and it wasn't uncommon to go out for a training session over the weekend between 2010 to 2015 and seeing you know 10 15 20 even 25 people out training in horsham and because of the Stora guys and because of like the parkour sundays group and and all of that there was a lot of people who were visiting Horsham from different countries. So we had people from Australia, Denmark, Belgium, France, all coming over to the UK and wanting to train in Horsham. So it was quite a big thing. And obviously back then parkour probably wasn't as understood or was as well known as it is now. So obviously you had a bunch of people going out, jumping off of walls, uh, kind of like using creative ways to, to challenge the space that was in front of them. And I don't think at the time, the public in Horsham kind of welcomed it too much. Horsham is a, is a small market town, got a lot of kind of older people in it. So it's kind of more of a retirement town as well. Um, and essentially like we never really got into arguments with, with the police, but the police were called from time to time we did have to have kind of have a conversation with them kind of talk to them about what it was that we were doing try and explain that we're not actually here to do any harm we're only here to kind of be creative and have fun and, and, and essentially have something to do so i started parkour in 2012 and you know that 2012 to 2015 there was loads of people going out and, and doing parkour uh, unfortunately around 2015 some people moved away some people went to university some people just stopped training altogether and kind of got on with their life so around that time it was really only myself and a couple of other people that were probably training in Horsham quite frequently I know back then Stora were still living there but they were traveling around a lot more they were kind of going to different places to to make videos and stuff but yeah it kind of died down quite quickly uh, in Horsham kind of around that 2015 mark but fast forward a year 2016 I was going out training. Uh, I just finished college. I was like, I'll go out for a solo session. There was a new spot that I wanted to hit up and train at. And I went out, started training, and then a community support officer came up to me and started speaking to me. And it was a really nice conversation. She was a lovely lady. She was really, really kind. We spoke about parkour. We spoke about how long I've been doing it, what kind of, where I want to take it, what do I want to do with it? And then she gave me a letter. Now I can't find this letter because I've just moved. So it's probably packed away somewhere, but I do have like a screenshot of it, which I'll share on the screen in a moment. But essentially she handed me this letter and was like, just letting you know, there is a discussion going on at Horsham District Council about potentially banning parkour. And one of the reasons that she told me that this ban was kind of coming about was because of the increased antisocial behavior, not just in the streets, but on the rooftops of, of the town as well. Now, I, if, if I get the chance, I'll overlay some footage here, but I'm kind of just going off the, off the bat with this video. Horsham's rooftops were very easy to access to. Let's say what, well, let's wind it right back. Horsham, as a town for young people, doesn't have much going on. There's not a lot of youth clubs. There's not a lot of things that young people can kind of get involved in and do. It's even worse now than it was back then, but back then like all the funding had been cut, there was no youth clubs, there was there was none of this. So a lot of people were kind of just going into the town and hanging out. And what we found was the rooftops in Horsham for parkour people are brilliant. They're really nice rooftops, they're really, really good. I'm not even gonna lie here, like they're, they're beautiful rooftops, they're great to train on. But back then, they were very, very easy to access. And by that, I mean, it's literally a case of 
walking up a staircase and you are on the roof. So not only was it easy for the parkour people to get up there, but it was also easy for everyone else to get up there as well. So I had this conversation with this lady and she was very much like, yeah, they're gonna basically make a decision to ban parkour. I kind of like brushed it off a little bit. I was a bit like, oh, I, I, you know, it's not gonna happen. Like it's such a positive thing. It was kind of like that young, I guess, naivety. I was kind of like, there's no way they're gonna ban it. There's absolutely no way at all that they're gonna ban something that's so positive. And then a couple of days after I got home, I'm just gonna pull up, up on my phone here, uh, by the way, phone cases from Alago. Uh, check them out, they're really good. Yeah, so this was posted on by the County Times, which is now Sussex World, on the 5th of September 2016. So this is maybe a few days after I had that meeting, or that encounter, should I say, with that woman. It says free running could be banned from public spaces in Horsham Town Centre by the District Council this week. A, a public spaces protection order, which aims to tackle antisocial behaviour, would prohibit drinking alcohol in a public place, antisocial use of vehicles and horse-drawn vehicles, and dog fouling across the district. Free running, also known as parkour, which involves negotiating between obstacles by climbing or jumping, would be banned in the town centre. Horsham District Council is due to agree in, uh, to introduce the PSPO on Wednesday, September 7th, in order to address a number of key issues raised by numbers of the Community Safety Partnership. Between March 2015 and February 2016, so this was kind of out of the, the main time of Horsham parkour, like shares, stock, I don't know what to call it. But essentially this was like when it was dying down a bit. So there really wasn't many people out training during that time, right? But it says between March 2015 and February 2016, there had been 57 recorded complaints relating to parkour, mainly in Horsham town, with one incident in West Street resulting in more than £36,000 worth of damage. I'm not going to be that guy that's going to be like nothing got damaged because I wasn't there on every training session. I didn't really train on rooftops too much. I did a little bit, but but not loads amount. But just that kind of like thought of that amount of damage coming from, from parkour practitioners didn't sit right with me because we were in Horsham, we were very respective of the space. We didn't want to have these these encounters or these negative kind of connotations to what we do because we were enjoying what we were doing so much. So I saw this news article published and I reached out to the person that published it. I was like, look, what do you know about this? Is there anything that we can do to help? Is there anything that we can kind of contribute towards it? And I don't have the initial email, but I've got the follow-up email that I had with this person and I'll attach a screenshot of that when we get to that point. But he said, yeah, by the way, this Wednesday, they're, they're going to be meeting. Like, you can come to the meeting if you want and you can try and say your piece. So I was like, OK, cool. Like, we actually have a chance to, to try and fight this back a little bit and kind of bring the benefits that Parkour has to so many individuals to the Horsham District Council and hopefully, you know, kind of sway their decision to not ban it and actually kind of embrace it a little bit, you know. So... We got to this meeting, so there was myself, David Witchell, and I think his brother Alex as well. So there was three of us that went to this meeting. And we got there, we were like, yeah, we're the parkour guys, we're here to, to kind of say our piece. In a meeting that was about two and a half hours long, the parkour community, so, so us, the parkour individuals who were there, we were given 60 seconds to share our point and to explain why parkour shouldn't be banned in the town centre. And David was the spokesman. Uh, I think being the oldest at that point, he was kind of feeling like the responsibility to be the spokesman. But 60 seconds to try and fight something that's going to have quite a big impact on us. It ju We just had to try and like get everything that we knew together in such a short space of time. And they were very strict on that 60 seconds as well. Like we weren't allowed to go over it more than a second. Like it was it was pretty mad to, to kind of reflect on that now. So David said his piece. Um, and again, I'm gonna pull up essentially the, the second news article that came out. But unfortunately, towards the end of, of the meeting, they made the decision to ban parkour in the town centre. Now I'm gonna go through the news article. Again, it's by County Times or Sussex World as it's called now. The, t the headline, police should seize free runners in Horsham and prosecute them. Wild headline, absolute wild. That's a good YouTube title right there. Free runners in Horsham Town Centre should be seized by police and prosecutors according to a cabinet member. Parkour, which involves negotiating between obstacles by climbing or jumping, is set to be banned in a public spaces in the town centre under a public spaces protection order approved by Horsham District Council last Wednesday, September 7th. Anyone found of breaching the PSPO without a reasonable excuse could be fined or issued with a fixed penalty notice. Kate Rowbottom, so this is a conservative 
from Billingshurst and Shipley, was a cabinet member for the community and well-being and said anti-social behaviour is a key issue for the local community and the problems outlined in this report have been persistent and ongoing for a number of years. The only other course of action is to maintain the status quo and allow the problems to continue. She told councillors that shopkeepers and homeowners had complained to the council about free runners and one case saw £36,000 of damage to a building's roof. The PSPO was passed after an unsuccessful amendment by big man John Chidlow, uh, who argued in favour of dropping the ban on parkour from, from the order. He said, to place free running, which is defined in a well-organised sport, to place it on the same level as dog fouling and dangerous driving, I really can't accept that. He felt that irresponsible behaviour, rather than parkour, was cause of the criminal damage and questioned how the order would be enforced. Matthew French, Conservative of Broadbridge Heath, felt the PSPO was rather woolly in many ways and that they were in danger of being labelled the fun police. Ben Staines, Conservative of Bramber, Upper, Beading and Woodman Co, argued that they did not have the evidence base to include parkour in the PSPO, but the amendment was defeated by a large majority. The claim that damage was caused by free runners was contested by public speaker David Witchell. He said, it's something we care deeply passionate about and we do not want to be restricted in our passion by being described as hooligans trashing our town. Brian Donnelly, cabinet member for finance and assets, said, I think it's crazy allowing this type of thing to take place in a town like Horsham. He felt there were locations for this activity to take place, but not on the buildings at Horsham Town Centre where it could concern our senior citizens. He added, people who are doing this are totally irresponsible and should be seized by the police and prosecuted. And then there's my little bit in here. After the meeting, another Horsham 17-year-old freerunner, Cam Lamington, and explained that they had the utmost respect for the community and property and councillors had not discussed how carefully free runners train and how cautious they are. He added, we are respectful to those around us and always make sure that the public safety is our number one concern. So essentially there was a lot of people in there that were very much like parkour is ridiculous. Like why is it being, <laughs> being allowed in the town centre? And of course it got banned. And from that, if you went out and you were caught doing parkour, you would get a, or supposedly get a fine. A lot of us ran jams, like we ran kind of pr protest jams in a sort of way that kind of got a lot of people to Horsham and we were looking at training and we were looking at basically just trying to start a conversation about it. We we ran one jam, uh, Community Spirit, on my old YouTube channel. Again, it's up there if you wanted to check it out. We got like approached a couple of times in that day, <laughs> like from community officers or from police officers. No one cared. Like they, a lot of people mirrored, I think, the idea of how stupid the decision was to ban parkour and one of the biggest things that i found from this and this is going to make me sound like a, a young versus old sort of situation but you've got something that's very positive in your town for a lot of young people and the decisions made for those young people are, are decisions that are being made by people who are older dare i say it out of touch with the young people of that community. I think a few months down the line, Parkour UK, which is the UK's national governing body of parkour, got involved in some way. I'm not sure fully to the extent on how much they got involved, but a few months after the ban, parkour got made an official sport in the UK. January 2017, parkour became an official UK sport. And after that happened, whatever conversation Parkour UK had, with Horsham District Council, made them change the wording on the ban. So it went from no free running or no parkour to no unauthorized access to buildings or street furniture. Now, I'm not gonna go into that whole explanation there of, of what it was, but Jimmy the Giant explains that in his video massively. But essentially what they said was basically don't get unauthorized access onto things. So yes, you can't do parkour, but you know, it wasn't any words to kind of say, oh, don't do parkour. And unfortunately, this has had like a massive impact on, on Horsham's parkour community in a sort of way. A lot of people that I've spoken to in Horsham whilst I've been out training parkour, it's always like, well, isn't this band here? Or are you supposed to be doing that? Not in a negative way. It's people like questioning that and questioning like, are we doing it out of defiance? Are we are we doing anything like that? And I'm just like, no, it's it's not really banned. Like if you can do it and if you can be respectable to your spaces and to the people around you, then there's gonna be no issues. Like have a conversation with people. And I've always been like that. I've always been there wanting to have conversations and educate people on the benefits that parkour has for you because there are so, so many benefits. You know, not just physical health, but mental health. It, 
helps young people have something to work towards. Like parkour people are some of the most creative people and driven people that I know. They're always working on something. There's always a new challenge. There's always like something to work towards. It's, it's brilliant. Like people within parkour are so inspiring because they, they've got something that they want to work towards or something they want to achieve and do and they work towards that. And it's fantastic. It's such a great thing to see. So when I have these conversations with people, I, I lean in on that. I go, I've been doing this for 12 years, but there's no limit to, to what I'm doing or, or to where I want to go with it. Like there's always going to be a new challenge. There's always for me something new to create. There's something new to do. There's something new to explore. And I'm doing it because it has so many good benefits on me. But unfortunately, because so many people in Horsham still think it's banned, the uptake has just died massively. I know loads of people that I've spoken to that have wanted to give parkour a try and they said they haven't because it's been banned in the town centre and that is mad and there's no support for it either. If you've banned it, okay, create a space for someone to go and do it or fund something where people can go out and do these things, but they don't have that. There's nothing like that in Horsham at all. Like it, it's so, so crazy. So yeah, I mean, nowadays you can train in Horsham, you might get told, to come back to something later on or it's very rare that we've had any kind like I've not been fined I don't know many people that have been fined I know there's probably been a couple of individuals who've been on the rooftops that have been fined I don't like they don't care like the, the police and I, I guess more the community officers care but the police don't care have a conversation with them they're like cool finish up um or just wrap it up or go somewhere else absolutely fine I had a very very recent encounter at the start of this year with uh, one of the neighbor officers and she said to me technically you're not allowed to do this in the town center but we're not going to stop you from doing it here are the places that you can go and do it where you won't be affecting anyone where it won't you won't get like told off for it like she gave me <laughs> some of the spots in Horsham that I already knew that I could go to to train parkour without being disrupted and you need more people like that. We need more people like that in our community because if you take away those creative kind of pathways for young people to take, you are gonna get antisocial behavior. You are gonna get people going up on the rooftops, drinking, smoking, throwing things around, causing damage. People within parkour are some of the most respectable people on earth. Like we, we care about the things that we're jumping to because if we smash it up, we can't use it. I'm not saying parkour people are perfect. There's obviously like everything has a few bad apples. There's gonna be some people that probably smash things up and don't care, but the Horsham community weren't like that. We cared about where we were training, what we were doing, and if something got damaged, we would we would talk to the people about it. But it was very rare something ever got damaged because we were so careful and considerate. This whole thing was like massively mad. It was it was such a weird, weird time. But essentially now you can go to Horsham and you can train and you're not really gonna get in trouble. You may have a couple of conversations and a couple of comments, but at the end of the day, engage in those conversations. Share what you're doing, share why you're doing it, express it, you know, it's important and I just hope this sort of thing doesn't have to happen again for, for anyone in the future because it was quite a weird and scary time because I dedicated four years of my life to this sport and then to be told it's probably getting taken away from you. Pretty scary, but uh, recovering from the brain injury still, so this is a bit of a waffle video. I thought I just kind of wanted to share my story with it. Uh, brain's a little bit fried now. I've probably missed loads of points, but I'm going to put this out anyway. It's going to be quite a long one, uh, but yeah, cheers.